Hello, I'm Charles from Charles Zen Photography. In today's video tutorial, I'm going to walk you through editing four moon photos in Adobe Lightroom CC Classic. Now, about a week ago, I did a YouTube tutorial on how to photograph the half moon. And around a month ago, I did a similar YouTube tutorial on how to photograph the full moon rising over the Houghton Bridge. So tonight we're going to edit two half moon photos, a full moon photo, and also a photo that I took about four or five days ago where the moon was about three quarters full, but it was still in daylight. It was around five o'clock at night. And I'll show you the different editing skills that I use in these four photos. So let's jump in and we'll start with the half moon photos. When it's getting very close to setting, it's getting less light so it has that warmer color which is actually quite nice so we're actually quite happy with this the way it looks here but we can see on our histogram and this is where some people get it wrong when they edit photos can you notice on our histogram that it's actually pushed quite away into our shadows and blacks and there's quite a bit of distance here to show that it's not correctly exposed now watch what happens if I actually tried to bring it up if I was doing a landscape photo should be. So I'm just about on the edge of the histogram here. Can you see all this edge here? It's just about all blown out. For moon photos we do not want this. So I'll bring it down a little bit. Not too much but I'll bring it here. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now we'll go with black, whites, shadows and highlights and we'll start off with the blacks and see how much clipping is involved. Now you can see when we hold for a Windows computer if we hold the Alt key all this black area here shows us that this area has been clipped. If we hold the high highlights key up here you can see that our highlights haven't been clipped so it means the moon isn't too bright. Now you don't want to be doing what I'm just going to do now and that is to bring the blacks so that I can hardly see it. In a landscape image I would actually be pushing this slider until I had a clear white screen. But I don't want to be doing this in the moon photo because there is no details here in the black. So there is no need to come all this way. The whites I'll actually hold down just a little bit. I'll bring the highlights. Now you've got to be very careful on a moon photo especially like this because as soon as you start, see it's at minus nine now, as soon as I start reducing the highlights, can you notice here that I've lost the edge of the moon? So there's very little that I want to touch here. Now if we go down here to the presence we have texture, clarity and dehaze. Now with my Nikon 200 to 500 profile I've already set the clarity at 12. And if we hold the Alt key again and start touching, so we can increase our clarity if we wanted to a little bit, just like the dehaze. But what I find is once I've just got these settings here, I will just slightly increase the clarity, increase the texture just that little bit here, and the dehaze. Now with dehaze, you don't really want to be sliding it too much to the right. Around 15 for this photo looks quite good. But this is a trick here. Now if we really go to town on this photo and do a lot of editing with these sliders here, we are going to be adding noise into this great gray area here. Now our ISO is already at 400 so if we add too much contrast or too much clarity here, this is going to affect this black area here. And we don't want to do that. So what I do is I come up here to the brush tool and come down the bottom here and we say show selected mask overlay so we can see where we're painting and I also click on auto mask down here. Now I'm actually just going to paint the moon. Now I've just gone over slightly the edge over there but that's no big deal. Now what I should state is auto mask means that when you've got a very contrasting edge like this between basically grey and black. As long as I keep 
my crosshair inside the moon it is not going to go it's not going to be painting on the other side now if I took auto mask off watch what happens can you see I'm actually painting the two ways so I would actually have to be doing this taking it very slowly and trying not to get over the edge of the moon so it is so much easier to use auto mask and just to go along and just paint the edge once we've painted the edge then we can take auto mask off and paint the whole inside of the moon now I'll take auto mask Whoop, put the flow back up I'll take the auto mask off and now I can easily paint the rest of the moon like that so now we take the mask overlay off and I can actually zoom in I'll zoom into one to one now I've cropped it so much that that's not going to work so I come up beside here and I select two to one this way I can actually see much clearer what my editing is doing to my image now you notice in this panel here we have actually got this is the brush panel here now we have actually got all the same settings as we have in the normal develop mode you can see we have exposure contrast highlights shadows whites blacks texture clarity dehaze and if we look on the normal panel we have exactly the same so instead of editing the whole image it's only the moon so we might as just work only on the moon so we can come up here now and we can add more clarity and if I go to zero you can see it's very soft if I go to a hundred you can see that is just way overdone so we have to find a medium point adding a bit of clarity without going overboard and the same with the texture we can add more texture and we'll add a little bit of dehaze that looks very good to give us an idea of what the moon looks before and after if I just click done here and I select here why why so this when I highlight this it says cycles between a before and after photo on our left is what our original photo looked like without any editing and on our right here is what it looks like now that we've edited this far so you can see we've actually got quite a bit of detail in our photo now there is a little bit of noise here but we can remove that slightly but if we remove it too much what we are going to end up doing is softening up the whole image you can see we haven't done too much yet and we've actually got a very nice photo already so we come back just to the single view we can come up back up here to use our mask overlay and down here we have underneath sharpness we can add a little bit more sharpening if we want and the same thing if I go all the way to the left there you go look at that it's so soft if I go all the way to the right it's just too much sharpening so we'll just add let's say around 20 on the slider now the noise here a lot of people think that if we slide the noise to the left we're actually reducing noise but we're not it's not really doing that we actually want to take the slider to the right and we'll take it around 20 as well there you go so that looks that looks quite good actually maybe the noise is a little bit too much we'll bring it down a little bit now I can add a bit of contrast and what I tell people like this is really learning as you go so I tell people sometimes you take it all the way one side see what it looks like take it all the way the other side see what it looks like and then you find a point where you're happy with the image now one thing I do tell people when I teach them how to edit photos in Adobe Lightroom is that it's good to see how other photographers edit their photos but you have to come up with your own style of photography because if your photos are very similar to another photographer you're not going to get a lot of people following you because your photos will look very similar to somebody else so develop your own style of editing and of actually taking photos as well and you'll find people want to look at your photos for the way you actually photograph them and this is how I've actually work myself into photography I look at other people's photos especially when I was starting I say oh I like this the way this person edits photos I like the way this person photographs these 
uh, landscapes and then I actually put my own spin on it and I've been doing this for 10 years I've refined my skills but people when they buy a photo from me they buy it because they like the way that one I photographed the subject and two the way that I've actually edited I've actually produced the image so I can add a little bit more shadows if I wanted to reduce a little bit so now I'm very happy with what it looks like so I click done zoom out now because the second photo is so similar to the first it was only taken two hours later what I can do is I can come up here onto the thumbnail right click on it and click on develop settings and I click on copy settings and I choose what I want to copy so I want to make sure here that I copy the brush tool but I don't want to copy the crop tool or else it will actually recrop it to the same as the original photo so I click on copy so it's copied all those settings now I come across to the second photo right click on it click on develop settings and click on paste settings now you can see it's actually copied all those settings across so because the moon was a little bit darker now I can actually increase the brightness just that little bit not too much there's actually quite a bit of warmth here and because it copied the settings from the first one we'll come back up here to our color picker and we'll select roughly about the same area that we chose the first time there this is what it says it should look like but if we look between the first and the second image so this is the first second image that we're working on this is the first one can you see that it's very similar in color this one's a little bit more white than this one this one's like a gray purpley color I actually want similar to this but just a little bit more warmth so now I just grab the slider tool and I will just slide it very slowly to the right that's it now I like that because when I saw it on the night you could actually see that it had some warmth compared to the first image now if we go back to the images we click on that one that's it you can see so we can see now that the second image has a little bit more warmth so now if I go up to the brush tool here I can see that my brush tool is here as well the brush mask what I do now is if I actually hold it with my hand I can actually drag it now what I'll do is I'll actually click on the mask overlay so it'll actually show me where the overlay is there that's it now I'm so close you can see all I have to do now is just add just a little bit more I'm just scrolling down here to make sure that my auto mask is on and now I'm just going to just run along the edge again because what's happened is the moon's rolled around a little bit there you go so now I've, I've saved myself at least five minutes in editing and I've got the same amount of detail that the first image has gotten now if we click on two to one we can see we've actually got quite a lot of detail here and I don't have to do any more editing I'm very happy with that so I click done and there you go so all our work was actually done in the first photo so if you're editing a couple of photos of the same night copying the settings like this does save you quite a bit of time and I do this also for my landscapes if I've taken landscape photos at around the same time wedding photographers do it the same way they'll actually grab a photo that's basically in the middle of all with the settings do most of the editing there and then copy all the settings and paste across to all their photos and then they'll just run through if some photos need a bit of touching up okay so now we're on to our third photo now we can see that here it is actually quite bright so we've actually got to reduce the brightness now that looks really nice and because it was taken basically at twilight we can actually still see the background and this is where also you'd want to be careful that if we actually edited the whole image adding texture clarity and dehaze and all that we would be actually adding a lot of noise into this bluish area here and we don't want to do that let's go back and we'll choose the color again and I'll grab one of these craters over here they look fairly close to neutral there you go look at that that looks very nice I'm really happy and I like the way the, the blue is in the background here now 
if you thought the blue was too blue like too intense or not intense enough you can actually come down here to the HN cell panel you click on saturation and here see this little toggle here you click on the toggle and you come up and you just select an area in the blue here if we slide down now we've lost the toggle but if we slide down we reduce the saturation in the blue and if we slide upwards we're actually increasing the saturation now you can see if we increase it too much we're actually getting into the moon here we'll just increase just a tad that looks pretty good now most of the time when you touch saturation you've also got to come up here to the luminance the luminance is basically the strength of what you've done so if you reduce the saturation quite a bit you normally have to increase the luminance of the color to balance it out or else it will look very watered down now because we hardly touched it we don't need to do anything but I will show you what happens so now if I actually just click on the image on the blue scroll down slide down you can see that it's getting dark and that's because we're losing the intensity if we slide upwards we're actually going to be increasing the brightness of the image now if I stop I'll actually will increase it by around 20 go back up there that looks that looks very nice that look very nice displayed uh, on social media or on your website if you have so we click done now we come up back to the basic panel and we'll do the same thing up we'll cl click on the adjustment brush tool here click on show mask overlay make sure that our auto mask is highlighted and we'll just paint around the moon again now this is so easy to do Lightroom has so many tools here that you can use now we click auto mask off and now I'll actually just go around and paint the rest of the moon and for our next image of the full moon I'll actually show instead of using the brush tool we'll actually use the radial filter because to give you an idea that there's more than one tool you can use so now I'll actually do the same thing I'll come up to two to one click off the mask overlay so we can see it we'll come up we'll add a bit of contrast we'll add some texture now you can see we're actually you can see it's starting to to build quite nicely we'll actually add a bit of clarity and with the clarity tool you can see like look at that look at the amount of detail that we're getting in the moon now and just a little bit of dehaze we can add a bit of sharpness now we can see here it's just catching up it's still scrolling here that's it now that looks very nice now if we go again just to see what it looked like before and after look at that so on the left is what our original image looked like and on the right our edited image and this is what I tell people that photographing the full moon is quite nice and a lot of people like doing it but I find that the half moon or even like the three quarter moon like that it just gives you so much more detail in the moon and it's not like to me not as boring because the full moon is just a circle you know so this is the sort of moon photos that I really like to take so that's about it this is all I really want to do in this photo now one thing that we can do so I come back here is in the detail here I should have shown you at the start but because this is the preset for my Nikon 200 to 500 millimeters in the detail sharpening I've actually got this preset all set up because this is what normally happens if I hold the alt key and hold the masking slider you can see that this is all the white here is where I've actually added sharpening to the image everywhere where it's back there is no extra sharpening involved look what happens if I bring it to the default value if I hold the slider here at zero can you see that any of the sharpening that I add here in the amount in the radius when I'm holding the alt key anything white is being sharpened so even my nice smooth background is being sharpened but the more I slide to the right the less of the background I get now most of my photos that I take with the 200 to 500 mil lens is wildlife birds and all that and the last thing I want to do is actually add sharpening to a nice soft background so this is why I have this masking set like this so when you're doing your moon photos and all that remember to come down here to detail 
hold the alt key but you've got to make sure that you're away from the default settings I don't add too much sharpening around 40 to 50 on the slide that's all I add the detail is around 20 to 25 but the masking is anywhere between 75 and 85 on the slider and you can see I've got no noise reduction here I'm very happy with this photo so now we come on to our last photo here which is the full moon now I'm very happy with this image now we'll just work on the last image which is the full moon so we do the same thing we come up here to our color picker and I'll find a crater which looks very gray that looks pretty good that looks quite nice like that let's see what happens if I actually just warm it up cool it down sorry just a little bit because it is a full moon so that's 3500 kelvins what about if we warm it up a little bit that's a little bit too warm now let's see what Lightroom says the white balance should be so we click on auto now this is what Lightroom says the white balance should be after analyzing the image so let's go with that you can see this sort of patchy area here this was because there was actually a few clouds just floating by now instead of using the brush tool like we did in the first three images we're actually going to use the radial tool just to show you another tool that we could use when we're editing our photos now the radial tool would only be a circle or an eclipse now I'm going to move it into position and then I will actually show you a little trick with this tool will slightly skinny now if I show the mask overlay like I did for the brush can you see here the overlay which means this is the area that we're working on it's pink and it's inside the moon but there's a huge feather here now, if I scroll down here I can see the feather now I'm going to reduce the size of the feather quite drastically I'll settle for about five I'll keep sliding down that's it I'm pretty happy with that now can you see just below the feather it says invert now watch what happens when I unclick invert can you see that now we're working on the outside so for example if we were working on a sunset photo and we got the image quite nice but because the sun's so bright the rest of our image was a bit dark we could actually use this tool here just to control the rest of the image so we could use this radial filter here and slide it over the the setting sun where it's very bright and unclick invert and then you could actually brighten up the rest of the image so it doesn't look as dark but for here we want to invert it that's it now we take the mask overlay off and we scroll up and now we can actually do exactly like we did in the last image we add a bit of contrast we add some texture we'll add some clarity add a bit of dehaze add a bit of sharpening and just a fraction of noise now we'll actually come back up here to the temp and I'll just cool the temperature down just a little bit that's it now if when I click done here I can actually go to YY again before and after there you go so on the left is the image that we took and on the right here is our final edited photo if we zoom in so this is at 200 percent can you notice look on the black area here we've got a nice black area there's hardly any noise shown even though we've done quite a bit of editing and the reason is that as you saw we didn't do that much editing in the whole image so we left our background alone and we just edited the moon so this is something that you really want to remember when you're editing the moon there's no use editing all this black area if you want to soften up all this black area even more you could come back up here to the radial filter click on the one that you've already worked on right click it and can you see here where it says duplicate click on duplicating it and now there's one sitting just above it and what we're going to do is we're just going to move it slightly to the right so you can see this is the new one and this is the old one here we're just going to move it a little bit more now I'm just going to increase now 
you can see because we duplicated it we have we're actually roughing it up so if I double click on texture and clarity on dehaze and on sharpening I'm actually bringing back all these settings to neutral I will click now on the show select mask overlay and you can see that we're editing the moon but we don't want that now we actually want the outside so we come up here and we select invert so we don't want to invert now we're actually working on the outside unclick mask overlay now I can actually come down here and say reduce the clarity reduce the texture reduce the sharpening and what we've done by doing this is now we've actually softened up all this area here click on done a bit hard to see but you can actually see now all this is just so much softer now you could actually do the same thing if we pick our second photo here come down here but for the brush tool we can't invert it what we do is now we can do the same thing click auto mask show where we're working and we just stay in the black area now, just quickly painting around the whole moon this is just very quickly to show you I've actually gone inside but that's okay okay so now I come up here to erase reduce my mask and I'll just work inside the moon because I don't want to be softening the inside so now we come up so we don't want the erase tool anymore we want the tool itself so we unclick auto mask and what I do now is I'll actually quickly paint all this black area here now this is a moon photo but I'll give you a little tip that I do this quite a lot with my bird photos when I have a fairly clean background and I've taken the photo for example at ISO 1000 or even ISO 1600 where I can see a bit of noise in the background so I don't want to actually reduce soften the, the bird itself I just want the background to be softened up and this is what I do so there's a little hint for you now I can just come up here halfway to the texture clarity I'm not touching dehaze sharpening as well that's it now I click done and look at that this photo was taken on ISO 400 and now we have such a clean edge to our moon shot so now you can see what our four photos look like when they're edited now you notice look at that they're all different and this is something that you have to learn when you're editing photos there's no use making all your photos the same because once somebody sees one photo why are they going to look at the second one or the third one if they're the same so whenever you edit a photo even if you're just taking the full moon photo mix it up a little bit add a bit of warmth reduce some warmth take it a different time of the night just so that your photos don't look the same you can see here each of these photos were taken at a different time of the night or of the day if we're talking about this one here this one was taken at 10 o'clock this one was taken at midnight this one was taken just after 5 30 p.m this one was taken just after six o'clock at night so now you can see how i edit my moon photos when i photograph the moon whether it's half moon three quarter moon or full moon i hope this has given you ideas how now you can actually improve your editing skills when you're editing the moon hope you've enjoyed the video if you've got any comment or feedback leave it in the comment box below i'll see you next time this is charles for charles in photography bye for now